Hi everyone, I'm Izzy. I'm a second year genetic counseling student and I'm about to start my second clinical rotation, which is in cancer genetics. I graduate in about a year and I need to choose some sort of genetic specialty to go into. And I definitely think that cancer is a contender. I guess we'll see if it still is by the end of this video. <laughs> a cancer genetic counselor is a type of medical professional with extensive training in human genetics, and they help people and their families understand their inherited risk for developing cancer. And they do this by assessing medical and family history, cancer history, offering testing when it's appropriate, and then interpreting those results. And then based on the results of the genetic testing, the genetic counselor can talk about what the recommended screening options are and if there's any risk-reducing strategies. And sometimes that includes things like risk-reducing surgeries. And they can also identify other people in the family who are at risk of having inherited that cancer predisposition syndrome as well. Tomorrow is my first day in the cancer rotation. I've been reviewing all of my cancer notes, which is they're way more than I thought it was. I, not that I ever thought cancer was simple, but <laughs> I don't know. It's a lot. Pretty sure I'm just shadowing. Hopefully, hopefully it goes well. I just got back from clinic. I think it went really well. I basically just shadowed for three different cases with one of our genetic counselors, but we actually have several different cancer genetic counselors because cancer is such a big area in genetics and genetic counseling. I kind of think of, you know, genetic counseling and maybe three big buckets. So I think of cancer genetics, prenatal slash reproductive, and then clinical genetics. And then there's several specialties under clinical, like cardiovascular, metabolic, pediatric, etc. cetera. Um, so right now I'm in the, the bucket of cancer genetics. And the way that most of these sessions work is that the genetic counselor will just grab the patient, bring them to their office, and you kind of just talk for 45 minutes. You go over everything, family history, what we're testing for, and then discuss if the patient feels like testing is something for them. I have two cases to do the day after tomorrow. So this time I'm actually supposed to take family history and medical history, so I have to do some, some reviewing for that. So the night before, I practiced taking family history with somebody, so that way I could come in prepared. As far as you're aware, has anybody in the family ever had genetic testing done, either for cancer or for anything else? No. Okay. Most cancers just occur by chance. They're due to a combination of environmental factors combined with several genetic factors. But around five to 10% of cancers actually have a strong genetic link. And these are the kinds of cancer cases that cancer genetic counselors are looking out for. And the reason for that is because many of these cancer syndromes come with a really high risk of cancer, much higher than whatever the general population risk is for that specific cancer. And so it's important to identify who has a cancer predisposition syndrome. So that way screening measures can be implemented or more frequent screening measures. I'm currently at John Wee's house. He's one of my friends who's also a medical resident um, in genetics. Hi guys, I'm John Wee. I'm a internal medicine medical genetics resident. She's currently doing a really cool study and I thought that's specific to cancer genetics that I find really interesting. Do you wanna like give a yeah. very quick explanation? Okay, so we're studying this leukemia predisposition gene that so far has been detected in people with like a familial history of leukemia, but it's never been studied in the general population to understand like the prevalence and like the typical age of onset of cancer. So we're doing a study comparing people with pathogenic variants in the gene to people who don't have pathogenic variants in the gene, just look at differences in like their health histories, um, ages, lots of things. Do you, are you interested in cancer genetics specifically? Yes, I'm okay. very interested in cancer genetics, hoping to carve that out as my niche in my future career. So, so far I've seen a couple of genetic counseling cases. For the most part, I was just kind of watching the genetic counselor, seeing how she does it, especially since it's only my second rotation. But I, yesterday I actually kind of said my first thing other than like a hello. I did a basic genetics explanation. So we have over 20,000 genes in our body and we actually have specific genes whose role it is to protect us against cancer. 
And there are several of these jeans, and with each of them, we actually have two copies. In most cases, you could say we get one from mom and we get one from dad. And you can think of this as being two different defenses against cancer. Somebody who has an inherited cancer predisposition syndrome has some sort of genetic change or variant, often called a mutation, on one copy that makes this copy of the gene not work properly or not work at all. And as a result, they only have one defense against cancer. They still do have defense, you know, they won't necessarily develop cancer, but you can think of them as being almost like one man down in that fight against cancer or in the protection against cancer. Depending on what gene we're talking about that's not working, this can dictate the types of cancers that the person is at risk of developing, as well as the likelihood that they're going to develop those cancers. Some of the cancer syndromes come with moderate risks, whereas others come with very, very high risks. And just to take it one step further, if this person who has one non-working copy and one working copy of a gene has children, with each child, there's a 50% chance that they'll pass down the working copy, and then a 50% chance that they'll pass down the non-working copy. I'm actually really liking cancer. It's more, e even more interesting than I thought it would be. I haven't seen a case yet where somebody has tested positive, uh, but I haven't seen that many results. One thing that's really nice is it seems like the cancer rotations you know, you have a lot of time to talk with the patient and it's just you. It's not like you're with the doctor, you're not with other people. Um, you're just you and the patient and you can take an hour. You can even take more sometimes. And I, and I can tell that there's people who really appreciate that because, you know, they don't normally get have time to ask as many questions as they have and have them all be answered. Um, so it's really nice to be in a profession where you can do that. Just got back from clinic. I actually only had one case today. I feel like I haven't really spoken about what would make me suspicious that there could be some sort of genetic cancer syndrome running in the family. I would say there's kind of four signs that I look for. The first one would be if there's several of the same cancers or related cancers in a family. By related, I mean that, you know, there, there are some cancer syndromes that can lead to several different types of cancers. So if we're seeing multiple of those cancers. The second thing are cancers at a particularly young age like breast cancer before the age of 45 or 50. Third thing would be any rare cancers. And the last thing would be ancestry because there's particular ethnicities, ancestries that come with a higher risk of having one of these conditions. For example, people with Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry have a much higher rate of having a BRCA mutation. We oftentimes refer to it as BRCA, like when people are talking about it. Um, and this can lead to breast, ovarian, prostate, pancreatic, melanoma. So I definitely factor that into kind of like the risk assessment. I'm here with Navpreet. Hey. Um, so she's the other student currently on the cancer rotation with me. Uh, we tend to rotate together unless you happen to be alone like I was for cancer and lab. We just like alternate cases basically and try to see as many as we can. Well, my thoughts on cancer, I actually think it's really interesting. One of the things I like about cancer is that you can actually make a really big difference. And I think what I was on clinical genetics before and in clinical we see a lot of new like sporadic de novo cases and in cancer it's like a lot of personal family history and it's just nice to be a part, a part of someone's like long story or like they have like a family history of cancer and it's like providing answers for something that's been troubling them for a long time. Hi, I'm Georgia. I'm one of the first year genetic counseling students at Mount Sinai. Yeah. Here below Izzy. Georgia is going to present a case to me and I thought we could talk it through on camera and go through the process that I go through when I'm preparing for a case. Why don't you present the case? Yeah, so this is a 28 year old female um, who's come to cancer genetic counseling because of a family history of a few different types of cancers. Okay. Um, and so the closest to her, her mom is now 53, but she was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia when she was 14. And then her mom's sister was diagnosed with brain cancer when she was 31. And then her maternal grandmother passed away from lung cancer at 35. Okay. And in terms of the mom, how many other siblings does she have? She doesn't have any other siblings, okay. so it's just the mom and the sister. So the, the first question, and I think right off the bat, uh, hearing brain cancer that along with like leukemia, I feel like I think of a couple different things. I think Lee any probably pops into my mind. My first question for the grandmother, was it, do you happen to know if it didn't start as lung cancer? Because I know sometimes cancers can metastasize and it might be, you know, that it 
pass with somebody, it seems like they pass away from lung cancer and that's sort of what we talk about, but it could have actually started as a different cancer. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't so clear at first, um, but the patient thought that maybe it had started as breast cancer. Okay. So I feel like hearing that and hearing that the grandmother passed away at 35, that would mean that there was some sort of really early onset breast cancer if it did come from breast cancer, mm -hmm. which again sort of supports the theory of Lee Fraumeni syndrome. I also think taking a look at this pedigree, this family history, it's kind of limited. There's not that many family members in this family and so there's not that many people um, who could potentially even manifest with cancer. So limited family history is often something that we're working with a lot of the time. Okay, yeah, and then I guess we have the 28 year old daughter coming in um, who doesn't herself have a personal history of cancer. So I guess looking at the family history, who would be the most ideal person to recommend testing for? I think in an ideal world, the, the most ideal person to test would probably be the grandmother, but I know she passed away very young and so that, that's not a possibility here. Um, but if we were to test, let's say, the daughter, the person coming in the proband, and she tests negative for all of the genes we look at, that still doesn't mean that there's not something running in the family. If there was, if this family did in fact have Lee Fraumeni syndrome, there's a 50% chance that this daughter inherited the Lee Fraumeni syndrome and then a 50% chance that she didn't. So um, it would be much more informative to test somebody who's had the cancers. I realize I never answered the question that Georgia asked on camera. So the best person to test would be this patient's mother because she's living and she's presenting with one of the cancers that's making us suspicious. Genetic counselors oftentimes collaborate with oncologists and see patients who currently have cancer because the results of their genetic testing can actually play a really big role in their cancer treatment or surgical intervention. So for example, if somebody currently has breast cancer and they've been discussing with their surgeon whether to do a lumpectomy where they just remove the cancer itself and the surrounding tissue, a mastectomy where they remove the entire breast, or a double mastectomy where they remove both breasts. Genetic testing can help somebody um, make a decision that's right for them. And that's because if somebody, let's say, comes back for a BRCA1 mutation, that individual is at a very elevated risk of having breast cancer again, even in the other breast. And so that individual may decide to have a double mastectomy and get both breasts removed at the same time um, to reduce the risk of having another breast cancer. So I'm a couple weeks into cancer and I feel like I'm learning so much. I really didn't know that much about cancer or cancer genetics at the start of this rotation, honestly, but I feel like there's some areas in genetics where I have a lot of background and cancer just really is not one of them. So it's really cool to, to learn all of this. I had a really interesting conversation with a patient today and I feel like it's just a, you know, really important point that I wanted to share. I'm gonna make up an example, but let's say I had a patient coming in with ovarian cancer, a female patient, and her genetic testing comes back positive for a BRCA2 mutation. Having this information can be really important for her treatment because we know that there's a particular cancer targeting drug called PARP inhibitors that actually work better on individuals who have BRCA mutations compared to the general population. So having genetic testing results can allow us to tailor the treatment to the patient and the patient's cancer, which is really cool. <laughs> so I'm finally on my last week of cancer rotation. I like it a lot. I think that there are certain things that it has that I love. So the first thing is that you get a lot of time with the patient. It's just you and the patient. I have not seen a single appointment with a physician or any other medical provider. So it's really cool to, to have that kind of a relationship with the patient where it's really just you and them. The one thing it feels like it's missing to me is kind of the medical side of things, which I know makes no sense because cancer is of course a really medical heavy specialty. But I feel like I came into genetic counseling with a lot of personal medical experiences and a lot of knowledge because of that in certain areas of medicine. And I've developed a lot of interest in those areas of medicine. And I don't have this same drive and interest for cancer as I feel like I have in the other areas of medicine. That doesn't mean I don't want to do cancer genetics. It's just I keep noticing that whenever a patient talks about a different aspect of their health, I keep 
having a tendency to want to talk about that more than I want to talk about the real reason that they're here. Um, so I think that's sort of an indicator to me that maybe some of the other areas of medicine are more where I'm going to end up in the end. So I guess we'll see. Uh, I have another year of rotations and my next rotation is metabolic genetics and then lysosomal storage disorders which I think is going to be really up my alley and I'm really, really excited about that. So maybe that'll be the area I go into genetics, but we'll find out. If watching this video makes you feel like maybe you need cancer genetic counseling or somebody in your family or somebody that you know does, what I'd recommend doing is either following this link, I'll put it right here. If you go to that link, it'll help you find a genetic counselor in your area who specializes in cancer or in any other area of genetics. Um, you could also ask your primary care physician if they feel like genetic counseling would be a good option for you and if they can refer you. I think either one's uh, a good method. Thank you again for watching this video and I will see you guys on my next rotation. Bye! <laughs>